What's up everybody, this is Danny, and today I'm finally ready to talk about my three month experience with the new MacBook Pros with Touch Bar. When I thought I was ready to make the video, some updates came out, kind of changed my overall experience of the MacBook Pros. So this is actually good for you because if you're on the fence and you haven't bought a MacBook Pro yet, then this video could help you make a solid buying decision. Of course, there's some good, there's some bad. Let's talk about it. Let's start with the things that I do like, and that is the hardware. So if you're a Mac fan, PC fan, it doesn't matter. If you've ever seen one of these in person, then you'll know that the build quality and the design is top notch. The impeccable machining, the thinness, the all metal body, it's great all around, and it's for sure one of the nicest looking laptops on the market, period. It's a little bit sharp on the bottom though. It's not as smooth as you would think it is. It's not a deal breaker by any means, but you'll feel it when you hold it in your hands. The display is the same resolution, but it's much, much better than the last generation. It's way brighter, it has better saturation and contrast, and it's even decent when you take it outside. That's how bright it is. And the keyboard will take you a little bit of time to adjust, and if you're not familiar with these shallow keys like the 12-inch MacBook, but trust me when I say that this keyboard, once you get used to it, it's one of the best on the market right now. And it might not have the travel that you might want at first, but man, I love typing on this keyboard. Just like before, the all metal body is beautiful, but it's not the most durable, so you will get scratches on it if you aren't careful, like you see here on the bottom of my 15 inch. So I suggest putting a skin on it like I did here, and since the Apple logo does not light up anymore, I decided to get a dbrand skin that covers it up, but you can still get that silhouette of the Apple logo. This is sick. Link below if you wanna pick one up. The trackpad is still one of the best in the business. It's super smooth and responsive but this thing is just ginormous. I mean, look at how big it is. It's just big for no reason. I mean, I haven't found any advantages in the trackpad being this huge. So let's talk about all the stuff that people are complaining about. The move to all USB type C ports. Now, I think this was really blown out of proportion. Now, I'm not saying that Apple shouldn't include more ports or at least include an SD card slot because on my last generation, I was able to take that SD card slot and double my internal storage with it and I still shoot with a camera that records to SD card, so it would have been nice to have it for sure. But if you think you have to carry around a bag full of adapters and dongles, that is not true. There are a ton of native USB Type-C peripherals right now and I think once other computer manufacturers get on board, later this year, I don't even think this will be a problem. Seriously, this is all that I carry with me most of the time. I have one adapter that gives me back the SD card slots and a couple of USB ports. For backup files, I carry this super small Kingston USB-C thumb drive that has 128 gigabytes of storage, is USB 3.1, and has a regular USB port on the other side, just in case I need to share files with someone that doesn't have USB Type-C on their computer. The reason why I don't need anything bigger is I have a one terabyte SSD, so that's enough internal storage for me personally. I also carry this Mobileite Wireless Pro for complete wireless file transfers. I can transfer files from this to my MacBook, phone, and tablet. It has an SD card slot, 64 gigs of internal storage, and it also has a 6,700 milliamp hour battery, so I can top up my battery on my MacBook while it's in my bag. Links below if you wanna pick one up or try it out. Being able to charge your MacBook with the USB Type-C port is absolutely game-changing, but the MacBook Pro 15-inch draws 85 watts of power when it's in use, so if you have it hooked up to a battery pack and you're using it at the same time, it is actually not gonna charge. You're gonna have to close the lid and you're gonna have to actually stop using it for it to actually gain charge. Unless you have a battery pack with AC power like this one. But if you're using a 13 inch MacBook Pro, it draws way less power at 65 watts. So they're gonna be much more compatible with these battery packs. So if this is important to you, keep that in mind. Being able to charge from any of these ports is also awesome, but I do miss MagSafe. While we're on the subject of battery, let's talk about the battery life. Now you may have heard from other people that the battery life sucks on the new MacBook Pros. Well, they were right. When I was going to CES, I actually edited a video on the plane. And I'm not kidding you that it went from 100% to 50% battery life in 30 minutes. I mean, it became a joke on Twitter because literally you could just see it tacking down every 10 seconds or so. It was terrible. And after about an hour and 15 minutes, it died. Granted, I was using the 15 inch model with the highest level GPU and the fastest clock core i7 quad core possible, but it was pretty terrible. If you don't do video editing like I do, and if you just use it for general computing, you may get three to four hours of usage from it, but that is way shorter than their 10 hour claim. 
The 13 inch is way better on battery life because you only have dual core processor options and no dedicated GPU. So if you want the longer lasting battery, then I would buy the 13 inch if you don't need the extra power, but it still doesn't get anywhere near the 10 hour claim. You're probably gonna get five to six hours at best. The good thing is, that the performance of these new MacBook Pros are absolutely fantastic and it exceeded my expectations. Even though you don't get the latest processor and have a limitation of 16 gigabytes of RAM, I'm able to edit 4K video with zero optimizations with no problem whatsoever and everything cuts like butter with smooth playback. So good in fact that the 15 inch MacBook Pro now is my sole editing machine. But if you're an Adobe Premiere user, I probably wouldn't expect this type of performance because Final Cut Pro is so optimized for the hardware. And to be honest, my fully spec MacBook Pro, I think is a little smoother than the 5K iMac I had before and even the Mac Pro. It's not all roses though, because on longer projects, you can feel the delays of the lack of RAM on refreshing. And if you plan to use a Thunderbolt 3 display, which is awesome because one connection displays the video and charges the MacBook at the same time, but my experience has been mixed. For normal everyday work like writing scripts, web browsing, and schoolwork, it's totally fine. But when you're stressing the CPU like video editing, the fans go crazy. I mean, a lot more than if you were just editing on the laptop itself. And even though you can drive two 5K displays at the same time, which is absolutely mind blowing, editing more on this setup, I noticed a lot more frame drops. So I had to wait for the clips to render and wait for the fans to die down a little bit before smoother playback. I hope they can improve this with some software updates, but taxing the CPU and GPU at the same time definitely causes some throttling. The last thing I wanna to touch on is the new touch bar, and I have some mixed feelings about this, and while I think that the overall execution of the touch bar is well done, I feel like the potential hasn't been fully met yet, and there are some cool features like having quick access to font colors, quick one touch to spotlight, quick fade in and out of the audio in Final Cut Pro, but I would still like to see better customization options without third-party apps. I mean, you should be able to put whatever you want in that touch bar, not what they think is productive for you. I think people that use a ton of keyboard shortcuts will still stick to them because it's still faster, and I use it more now than I did when I first got this MacBook, but I wouldn't miss it if it was gone. I would love to see this come to a new version of the Magic Keyboard, though. I feel like this application would fit better on a desktop. So what do you guys think? The Touch ID sensor is not technically a part of the touch bar, but it's super convenient for fast sign-in and online purchases. I love it. I guess the biggest question is, should you buy this laptop? I mean, if you need a Mac right now and you can live with the mediocre battery life and the more expensive pricing, then I say go ahead and go for it. But I also wouldn't blame you if you tried something else like a PC. But if you have the last generation MacBook Pro or even the one before that, I'd probably save my money and wait for the refresh coming later this year. We know it's coming with the new KB Lake processors, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and hopefully better battery life. Maybe you can just swap out your SSD to make things a little bit faster while you're waiting. I mean, you can't do that with the new MacBook Pros. Everything is soldered on. And Kingston have actually a great tutorial on how to do that. So if you wanna learn how to change out your SSD, then check out that video right here. I wasn't a complaint about some of the bugs and some of the graphics issues I was having, especially when disconnecting from displays and kind of reliability when you close the lid and things like that. But a lot of that has been fixed with software updates. So if you're worried about it, I really wouldn't be. You should be pretty good to go. What's sad is that it took three months to get this laptop to run like it should have on day one. So I hope Apple gets their crap together when they release the next one. This computer got a ton of flack, and maybe rightfully so, but it's not that awful and just piece of crap computer that a lot of people are saying, but that's just, in my opinion, it definitely could have happened to them. For me personally, the experience wasn't a perfect one for sure, but the good definitely outweighed the bad, and it's doing exactly what I wanted to do, which is edit video like a champion. So if that is not what you're looking for, or if you have a different application, then this computer might not be the one for you, but for me, it's here to stay in 2017 as my primary computer. All right, guys, well, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I wanna shout out Kingston for sponsoring this year to help me bring you more computer content on this channel. So make sure you check out their YouTube channel. They have tons of cool stuff on there. Make sure you smack that like button if you enjoyed this, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.